I was broken with blinded eyes. I was caught up in the chains of darkness. Fragile heart, meant to die. Till love found me and saved my life. Never lost, cause I knew I'd take refuge wherever I go. Your love surrounds in you, I'm found. I sing your praises. I scream So um, welcome once again. You know that in our season today, we know that people are are we we are so um 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 we so easy to follow personalities. So whether it is going to be someone in the in the campus, someone in the entertainment world, someone in the political arena, someone whoever it is, we are so um, adept or easy to follow personalities. That is why our, our series for today is really looking at beyond the people, beyond the kings, beyond the kingdoms, or beyond the platform that they are being used by God. So therefore, part of our role as a church is to really make sure that each and every one would actually see beyond the personality, beyond the platform, beyond kings and kingdoms. And that is why I would like to... Uh, Further on, encourage everyone, all of our Victory Group leaders, you are all encouraged, highly encouraged to join us. This is a topic that is really close to our heart because we wanted to have a biblical perspective. It's from the lens of what does the Bible say in order for us to see, you know, what we are going through, particularly in our time right now. And um, if you want to come and join us on site, our Victory Group leaders are highly encouraged to come and join us here. So please go ahead and register. But if you want to join us, we can, we can give you the link online because we've invited a, uh, a, a figure who is part of the Congress in the, in the past, Kong Chona Gonzalez, who will actually give us a biblical perspective of what we as Christians ought to see and ought to view what is currently happening in our nation, particularly as we go and elect our national leaders. So mark your calendars. It's going to be May 5, uh, 2022. It's at 6.30 p.m. All right, so today we are on our second week of our series entitled Beyond Kings and Kingdoms. And we all know that there are so many things that we have to glean from the Old Testament in order for us to understand it right now. And one of the things is about dreams. Do you know that in ancient world, dreams were thought to be shadows that, for, that the future cast in front of itself? You know the shadows, di ba? Lat naman tayo, meron tayong anino. But the anino is not exactly you, it's a casting of, you know, of, of who you are. It doesn't have any kind of detail. Now, today we're going to look at a dream that one of the kings of Babylon really had. It's a future cast in front of himself. It's a tipping its hand to show what lies ahead. During the ancient times, you know, kings and all of those leaders of various nations, they would really take it seriously when they have dreams in life. So today, the interpretation of these dreams was therefore important. Why? Because as these are casting the future in itself, it is in order for the king to take whatever steps to counteract the events that the dreams anticipated. So in short, they were looking at the dreams and they know that it's going to be talking to them about the future. So having them interpreted right now or be interpreted right now, they will help them prepare for what is up ahead. And in preparation for such eventualities, many of the kings of the ancient Near East have specialist dream interpreters on their payroll and Nebuchadnezzar, our king, 
in Babylon, the what we are talking about today, had this particular experience. I'd like for all of us to stand up on their feet right now in reverence to the Word of God as we begin to read from Daniel chapter 2, verse 1 to 13. In the second year of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams, and his spirit was troubled, and his sleep left him. Then the king commanded the magicians, the enchanters, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans be summoned to tell the king his dreams. So they came in and stood before the king, and the king said to them, I had a dream, and my spirit is troubled to know the dream. Then the Chaldean said to, to the king in Aramaic, O king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. But the king answered to the Chaldeans, The word from me is firm. And if you do not make known to me the dream and its interpretation, you shall be torn limb by limb, limb from limb, and your houses shall be laid in ruins. But if you show the dream and its interpretation, then you shall receive from me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and its interpretation. They answered the second time and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will show its interpretation. The king answered and said, I know with certainty that you are trying to gain time because you see that the word from me is firm. If you do not make the dream known to me, but there is one sentence for you, you have agreed to speak lying and corrupt words before me till the time change, till the times change. Therefore, tell me the dream and I shall know that you, shall, you can show me its interpretation. The Chaldeans answered the king and said, There is not a man on the earth who can meet the king's command. For no great or powerful king has asked such a thing of any magician or enchanter or Chaldeans. The thing that the king asks is difficult, and no one can show it to the king except the gods, and dwelling whose dwelling is not with flesh. Because of the king, because of this, the king was angry and very furious and commanded all the wise men of Babylon to be destroyed. Finally, verse 13, So the decree went out, and the wise men were about to be killed, and they sought Daniel and all of his companions to kill them all. This is the word of God for all of us today. And may the Lord our God anoint the preaching of his word. Father, we look to your word, God. Would you allow us, Father, to, to, to see your perspective, God, when it comes to matters in our own lives? Yes, I know, Father God, that we are, we are looking at beyond the kings and beyond the kingdoms. So therefore, we're looking to you, Father God. And I'm praying, Lord, that through the example of Daniel and, and the rest of his friends, Lord, may we also understand, God, the role that we have to play, Lord, as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And at the same time, Lord, may we also apply it in every area of our lives, God, we thank you, Holy Spirit, you will anoint me as I preach your word, and you will open up our understanding, God, as we hear your word, whether on-site or online. To you be the glory, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. You may now take your seats. Second week of our series entitled Beyond Kings and Kingdoms, and we are looking at the, the first six chapters of the book of Daniel in order for us to address not only our current situation, but for the rest of our lives, we will have a biblical perspective. We all know that in two weeks, we're going to be electing our national leaders, but this particular topic that we, were, we will have will, yes, it will apply to our current situation, but at the same time, it will also apply to you in every situation that we are facing. Do you know that being at the center of God's will does not exempt us from any kind of troubles? 
In short, lahat po tayo, magkakaroon po tayo ng mga problema, pagsubok, and, and affliction that we will come our way, even if you're a Christian. And we can be exactly where God wants us to be and still get ourselves in trouble. I'm just here not just to, um, to scare you, but to prepare you that there might be some troubles along the way, even if you're the center of God's will. The Bible says that, yes, Jesus mentioned in this world, you will have many troubles, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So therefore, our comfort is that God will always not just give us the grace, but likewise, He will have providential sent providentially send someone to take care of his people. And that is the reason why we would encourage you to be part of a victory group. Because if you have something that's going on in your life, you need someone to stand with you. Someone who can pray for you. Someone who can, who can cry with you. And someone that you can, you, who can pat you on the shoulder. You know, in our, in our, in our um, example for today, we are going to look at all of this and more. You know, Daniel and the four friends in Jap- chapter 1, they have Ashpenaz in Daniel chapter 1, and number 2 is that they have also Ariok. But here's the, po- the question I wanted to pose to everyone. We all know that there will be some troubling situations that will come your way, but the real question I wanted to ask from everyone is that in times of peril, is silence an option? Pag sinabi po natin peril, it's going to be something that's dangerous. When you are in a dangerous situation, is silence even an option? We all know that as Filipinos, ma- maano po tayo eh, ma- matiisin. Tama ba? Di ba tayo po mga Pinoy, parang matiisin tayo. You know, hanggat sa hindi pa talaga sumasabog at hindi pa puputok, matiisin talaga tayo. Dadamdamin natin yan. At hanggang sa uh, uh, dulo ng pagputok ng bulkan. O okay, hindi tayo alis. Hanggang sa talagang ma- ma- lumipad na yung mga bahay dahil sa mga typhoon. Pero pag wala pa naman, hindi pa. Matiisin kasi tayo. But then at the same time, in, our, in us being like that as a culture, Pag talagang punong-puno ka na, you're going to outburst in emotion. You can identify, right? Because I am also a Filipino. And growing up likewise, when I was a teenager, when there are moments wherein the situation calls for it, we would go and, and, and protest and, and rally and talk to the people. Kasi nga medyo social, makibaka, don't be takot. And these days in our culture, it's not about just the rally. You know, I mentioned this because going to a, from Ortigas to here, I actually saw two rallies. One in Camp Krame and the other one along Kubao. So they're trying to converge themselves. So kaya, I'm sorry if I'm getting into that particular type. Kasi nga po, may nakita ako kanina. But no, these days, many people are going to social media and putting their ranting in protest. Are we here? Ganyan po ngayon yung mga ka-age natin, yung mga generation natin. You know, instead of you speaking out in, uh, in respect or in honor, you rant and you make social media as your platform to talk about your hurts and your pains. You know, what we are going to talk about today is how do we trust God even when speaking up is unpopular. And I'm encouraging everyone you know, to look at you know, what is behind speaking up? You know, when we are studying in school, you know, we are not taught to be speaking out our minds or speaking what, 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 what we feel like we ought to say. I remember when I was in school, I was compliant. A regular school teacher will teach and the students will study and then mataas yung grade mo. If there are classmates of mine that, are, are, that, that would speak their mind, ang view namin sa kanya, hmm, pabibo. Okay? O, oh, hmm, may, 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 may panow it all. But then, there's nothing wrong with us speaking up our mind. Because we need to have that as, our, as, uh, as who we are and as a nation. Even if speaking up is not popular, we need to understand the very reason why Daniel had to do it. Remember the story that King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream 
And he said, he's not just about asking the interpretation of the dream. He asked the magicians, the enchanters, and everyone working for him for the dream itself and the interpretation of it. In short, kung ikaw yung mga magicians na yon, it's so hard to do it. Knowing the dream and interpreting it. And the king was so furious, you know, the, he, he, he had an edict and he wanted to have all of them killed. But the question was, Daniel is one of those on the payroll staff of the king. In short, hindi man siya directly kausap ni king but he's, he was actually affected by the edict. The question is, will you remain silent? Will you go and make a protest? Will you rant in social media? Wala pa pong social media noon, so there's no option for him. So therefore, Daniel had to speak up. But how are you going to speak up? Many times we speak our mind with so much emotion that instead of us talking about an objective, we become subjective in whatever we say. So therefore, looking at this whole story in the book of Daniel chapter 2, we would see the biblical principles on how we can trust God even if speaking up is unpopular. Number one is speak up with prudence and discretion. Let's read from the verse. Succeedingly, Daniel replied with prudence and discretion to whom? To Ariok. And the king, the captain of the king's guard, who had gone out to kill the wise men of Babylon. In short, if you were Daniel and you heard of the edict of the king, okay, instead of you running straight to the king, Daniel looked for an, a, a person who would help him open up the door for the king and understand what's happening. And, Daniel's, and the Bible said that Daniel replied with prudence, with discretion. What do you mean by prudence and discretion? When you talk about prudence, you're exercising wisdom and caution in making sound judgment. Too many times because we react to whatever situation, we are saying without even thinking of what we are going to say. Daramdaman niyo na ba yun? Pag nagsasalita ka, nagsalita ka and you wish you didn't say that. Pero kapatid, sinabi mo na. Hindi mo na pwedeng bawiin yun. And nowadays, because of the platform in social media, people have videos of whatever we are going to say. So therefore, I would appeal to everyone here on site and even here online, exercise prudence. Bago, ka man lang, bago man lang sabihin ito, think through it and what would be the repercussion of it in order for you to make your sound judgment. But at the same time, the Bible likewise says that Daniel replied with discretion. When you talk about discretion, is the quality of behaving or speaking in such a way to avoid causing offense. It's, your, it's, it's the quality, the condition of your life. Kasi pag galit na galit ka na, wala ka na sa tamang pag-iisip, pati yung mga galit na galit ka na rin. But if you understand how Daniel replied to Ariok, prudence, discretion, calmness, tact. And that is how he spoke to Ariok. And he declared to Ariok, the king's captain, what is the decree of the king so urgent? Now that we understand, it isn't about Daniel asking, why is the decree of the king so urgent? It was in prudence. It was in discretion. Why is the decree of the king so urgent? It makes a difference, right? Pareho lang yung sinabi, pero iba yung quality of how you say it. Then Ariok made the matter known to Daniel, and Daniel went in and requested the king to appoint him a time that he might show the interpretation of the king. So sure, Daniel doesn't even know yet what, what the dream was, but he asked for an open door for him to be appointed a time with the king. And in situations where it warrants for us to speak, there are moments wherein you don't even know what to say. But you just have to say it with discreet and prudence in order for you to have that open door with someone in authority. 
But let us exercise a virtue of having our conversations be tactful and wisdom-filled. I would encourage everyone because we're all believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, we cannot just go and tactlessly say something that, is, that, you know, that we, we, we never even thought of or deeply thought of. As believers, we are representing the Lord Jesus Christ in the education, in the campus, in the business, in our families, even in the, in the government. Exercise tact. Are we here? And then Daniel went to his house with his friends. And he talked to his friends the matter, and he talked to Hananiah, to Mishael, and to Azariah's companions. That's why, again, it's important we have people in our lives whom we can share lives with. Kasi ang problema, kung wala kang kaibigan, wala kang kapatid, sino pagbabatohan mo? It's important, even in our own lives as senior pastors, there are moments when I have to talk to Pastor Noel and Dicho of Victory Ortigas. I have to talk to Pastor Christian Flores of Victory Katipunan. I have to talk to Pastor Richard Lee of, um, of Victory Nova Leaches and Pastor Mark Constantine of Victory Pasig Estancia because these are the men who are close to me. And I would defer to them, what do you think, bros? Daniel had Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to express what was in his mind or what was in his heart. And then he told them to seek mercy from God to, of heaven concerning this mystery so that Daniel and his companions might be destroyed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Now, how do you think the conversation went? He was telling his friends, let's pray about this. Kasi apektado tayo dito. This is not time for us to be silent, but to really seek out the, the, the audience with the king and begin to speak up. And then the mystery was revealed to Daniel in the vision of the night. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. What we can learn from this is that even though Daniel doesn't even know what to say, he looked to God and together with his friends, they sought the wisdom of God on how to approach the dream of the king. Because in situations where we do not know what we ought to say, we ran to God. Punta mo si Lord, because God knows everything, even the deep mysteries, He knows it. And then when we, when we run to Him, He can reveal to us what He wants us to say. Therefore, if you don't know what you ought to say, you talk to God and say, Lord, give me the words, God, not out of anger, not, of our, not out of my own emotion, but it has to be tactful, wisdom-filled, and representing you, Lord Jesus Christ. So Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever, to whom wisdom belong, wisdom and might. He changes times and seasons. He removes kings and set up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and the, and the knowledge to have understanding. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells with him. And Daniel began to praise God to you, O God of my fathers. May I remind you that Daniel is in a pagan nation. He was in exile, but he maintained his integrity with God. He continued believing in the Lord God Almighty, even if he was serving a pagan king in a pagan nation. So mga kapatid, whoever you are, you are following as a leader, whether that leader is a believer or not a believer, whether your office is a, you know, a Christian office or not a Christian office, whether whoever is going to run our nation, whether it's God's will or maybe it's not your choice, you, know, you run to God and continue to have your stand and your conviction with God. Remember, beyond kings, beyond kingdoms, it's God. And then Daniel thanked God. And he said, For you have made known to us the king's matter. So therefore, speak with prudence and discretion. And when speaking is not popular, second principle is to speak with boldness the message God wants us to convey. Even if... <clears throat> There are moments wherein you have a revelation from God and you ought to say it. Don't feel as if you're so privileged that only you can hear from God. 
you ask God, Lord, how am I going to say it? Too many times, Christians, whether in your workplace or whether in your campus or whether in your family, you know, sakit ko rin po ito when I was an early Christian. And I know that I have a message from God, but I felt like I'm the only one you know, spoken to God with this message. Therefore, you have to hear it and you have to listen to it. Walang tact, walang wisdom. And you probably have a message from God. When asking God for that particular message, would you likewise ask Him on how you will have to say it? And when is the proper timing for you to say it? But when Daniel had the revelation from God, the mystery of God, then he had the boldness to speak. And therefore, Daniel went into Arioch, and the king had appointed to destroy and the wise men of Babylon, he went and thus said to him, Do not destroy the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will show the king the interpretation. Why am I speaking this way? Because the framework was Daniel said it with prudence and discretion. There was a sense of urgency, but at the same time, firmness. Are we here? Kailangan natin yun because God, only God can give all of that to us. Then Arioch brought in Daniel before the king in haste and thus and said thus to him, I have found among the exiles from Judah a man who will make known to the king the interpretation. And the king declared to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, and are you able to make known to me the dream that I have seen in its interpretation? Again, we are looking at how kings back then would really view dreams because it was, it's, a, it's a shadow that has been cast when it comes to their future. And then Daniel answered the king and said, No wise man, no enchanters or magicians or astrologers can show to the king the mystery that, God, that the king has asked. You know how prudent and humble Daniel was because although he had the message from God, he didn't act as if he was the son of God. That he was the prophet for that particular time. He said, no other people who can say what you wanted. But look at verse 28. He said, but there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries and he has made known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days. Your dreams and your visions as your head, as you lay in bed, are this. You know, when we are going to speak, ask ourselves the question, is my message going to be bring the person closer to Jesus? Or will they be taken far away from Jesus? Because of my words. Therefore, look at how Daniel said it. He honored God and he honored the king. The God of heaven who revealed is also revealing it to you, O king. You see how he was doing it? With an attitude of discretion, the quality of his behavior. And therefore, he said, To you, O king. May respect pa rin, kapatid. So in short, whoever is going to be running our nation for the next six years, respect. Whether the one that you voted for will be the one elected or whether it's not, respect. Are we here? Because we are representing the King of Kings and that's Jesus. Beyond kings and kingdoms. But I'm still encouraging you to go out and vote. It's your right to suffrage. Choose what you, what, what, you, what you believe is the right person to run our nation. And then verse 20, 30 says, But as for me, this mystery has been revealed to me, not because of any wisdom that I have more than all the living, but in order that the interpretation may be made to known to you, O king and that you may know the thoughts of 
your mind. Do you know that in several years past, when there are laws that ought to be um, 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 passed, our church would actually have, would seek an audience. When there were bills that were presenting itself, that maybe be contrary to the Christian belief, we would speak out with discretion. Maybe come out with a position paper on how you're going to say it. Kasi kung isisigaw mo yun sa social media, do you think papansinin yung ranting ko? Kahit na, mag, kahit na 50,000 comments yan, do you think papansinin yun? But I would rather ask God, Lord, how are we going to exercise this? Because the message ought to be clear. Beyond kings and kingdoms. Growing up, I was part of the martial law era. And we call ourselves the martial law baby. After President Ramos, there was President Aquino. After President Aquino, there was President Fidel Ramos. After President Fidel Ramos was President Estrada. After President Estrada was President Arroyo. After President Arroyo was President Aquino. After President Aquino was President Duterte. And now we're going to elect another president. There are moments wherein I was so um, um, involved in all of those things. But I looked at it, Tuloy naman ang ikot ng mundo. Hindi mo natigil yung mundo. In the same way, don't just exercise the passion okay, and, and ranting and doing all the things because of a person. But look at beyond the kings, beyond the kingdoms. What is God doing in our nation? Are we here? So therefore, my conversations had to be seasoned with salt. Because I am called to be the salt of the earth. Let my conversations be bringing the light of the gospel. Because God also called me to be the light of this world. And I'm not going to be participating in any kind of political rivalry because I know I'm going to be voting for someone that I know had to, 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 to be the next one. Pwede tayo mag-aaway, kapatid, kung magkaiba tayo ng posisyon. Are we here? Because the final principle in speaking up in times of peril is speak as a minister of reconciliation. Why do I have to outline all the presidents in my lifetime? Because my goal is to reconcile everyone. Pagkatapos na po yung May 9, Balik tayo ulit sa church. Okay, pero minsan, yung sakit na nadanas natin before the main nine, you know, nagka-cancel culture tayo. Cancel friendship. Church, we are called by God to become ministers of reconciliation. Our conversations had to reconcile people to God. Then the king, Nebuchadnezzar, fell upon his face and paid homage to Daniel and commanded that an offering and incense be offered to him. And the king answered and said to Daniel, Truly, your God is God of gods and Lord of kings and the revealer of mysteries, for you have been able to reveal this mystery. The greatest thing that Daniel has accomplished is to become a minister of reconciliation to the pagan king. King Nebuchadnezzar, a pagan king, although in the entire book of Daniel, you know, you would see, you know, yung, yung talagang idolatrous um, a ways niya as a king. But Daniel was able to plant that seed because of his conversation that King Nebuchadnezzar acknowledged, truly, your God is God. And the Lord is the Lord of all the revealer of all the mysteries. I want to have all my conversations not protesting 
for the purpose of protesting, without thinking what I have to, you know, the words that I have to say. Not people to tell me, ang galing-galing mo naman, Noel Nanyes. Iba ka talaga. Ang galing mo magsalita. Not to me, Lord. Not to me. But to God be the glory. Because everything that I would say, I would want people to know Jesus Christ in a personal way. And let my life and my conversation be an encouragement, not a deterrent, but an encouragement for people to come to terms with Jesus Christ. And then, ano na lang ito? Be, um, reward na lang ito. The king gave Daniel high honors and many gifts and made him ruler over all the whole province of Babylon and the chief prefect over all the wise men of Babylon. And Daniel made the request of the king. And he appointed Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego over the affairs of the province. And Daniel remained at the king's court. Wisdom. Discretion. But he was never afraid to stand up and speak up. And he's representing God in the affairs of his work. And I would encourage everyone to do the same. Daniel said, it's important for him to begin to talk to God. A relationship with God is all that matters. Because if you have a word from God, ask Him how you're going to say it. And when is the proper time for you to say it. But if you don't have anything yet, continue to make your stand. Be discreet. Exercise tactfulness. And make sure that Jesus is praised. The Bible gives us an assurance that the Holy Spirit will teach us words or what we ought to say. Let the Holy Spirit be the one to breathe life into us. And when you are facing a tough situation, don't even know how to address, let the Holy Spirit speak through you. In you and through you. Because if there's one thing that we have to understand, is that God is the revealer of all mysteries. Therefore, when we are in times of peril, we can run to Him and He can instruct us on what to say and how to speak up. My prayer for this Sunday is that it will all change the way we view our conversations. It will give us a different perspective now on how we are representing Jesus Christ in every area of our lives. May the Lord our God continue to use you to become the salt of the earth and the light of the world because that is who we are as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Let's all bow our heads right now and pray. Lord Jesus, If there was a time, Lord God, in the lives of, in your life, God, that you did not speak up, Lord, when Pilate questioned, you did not answer, Lord, because you still are representing God in your silence. And I'm praying, Lord God, that each one of us, Lord, will make a big difference in the way your will be done in our nation and in the way your kingdom come upon our nation. Help us see, Lord God, that we are called by you to be reconcilers, to be ambassadors, to be ministers. And whatever is assigned of us to do, Lord God, may we bring honor 
and glory to you. We thank you, Father, that you're here with us, guiding us every step of the way. I'd like for all of us to stand up on our feet right now. This is what we're going to do as we end. I want us all just to make a time of dedication to God and say to God, Lord, here I am, use me. My words, my actions, every thought pattern in my mind, Lord, redeem it that I can be used by you. We are looking forward for a brighter Philippines. And the only way this could happen is when His church continue to enthrone Jesus Christ in our nation. Can you be that man? Can you be that woman? Would you all raise up your hands to God right now and make a prayer of dedication and say to God, Here I am, Father. Use me. All my imperfections, my frailties, my weaknesses, my troubles, Lord God. But still, you're going to use me, Father God, to be the salt and the light. Jesus, give me the boldness, Lord God, to speak your word and to represent you. Let's just worship the Lord right now. Come on, there's no turning back. Jesus, you're all I see. I know that you're with me. No turning. No turning back. My cross, I care. See you. 